Radio Engineering Graphics and Design Learners, welcome again to the How to Hack Your Pet series, only on How to EGD, and of course, only for grade 12s, doing the civil pet in engineering graphics and design for this year. Now, I've started this video off on our pace setter, and I'll be looking at exactly what is going to be the requirements of 5.1.2, the two elevations as part of your pet. But as a reminder, here is your pace setter that details all the requirements and the different components of your pet. Please take note, the previous sections of this pet has been discussed in videos. You're welcome to have a look at them. We've gone through the design brief, the research, the freehand concepts, how to select it, as well as the floor plan. And we're now at 5.1.2, detailing your two elevations. Now, that must be done roughly around 8 May, and it's one A3 page that's going to be completed in this. Now, to get us started, we need to know what does this entail, and it's referenced in your actual PAD document, also at 5.1.2, two elevations. This is on page 14 of the PAD document, and all of this, of course, is available as a download in the description Plus, I'm going to share actual examples of what is required. Now, I've already looked at the floor plan here. That's why this is highlighted. But let's look at 5.1.2. The two elevations need to be drawn to the same scale as the floor plan. That is absolutely critical for you. The same scale that you've used in the floor plan must also be used for these elevations. Of course, that is to make your life easier. All right? Using the same measurements is going to make it much easier. With one view... That shows the front entrance to the building. So please take note of that. One of the two views must show the front entrance. That's your drop-off area, your rotating doors, your entrance. And the other must then show the side view of the building. So they don't specify which one, but a side view. It is recommended to draw the elevations that would be required for the two-point perspective drawing. So consider already here... You're going to need to do a two-point perspective drawing, so consider that the elevations that you choose now actually helps you in that two-point. All right, then they further remind you that all of the following needs to be included in these drawings that's listed in 5.1. If you look at them, they talk about all the exterior features, including the doors and the windows. All windows and door frames must be shown in the two elevations, so please, people, all the windows and door frames here must be shown. I'll show you how that looks. The roof detail, including rainwater systems, your rainwater downpipes, your roof lines. And in this one is going to be important because you've got a Dutch cable roof here. I'll show you how to do that. All permanent fixtures, of course, that you won't see in your elevations. Electrical fittings won't see, be seen in the elevations. But the wastewater disposable systems, your sewer, you will see that in the elevation. So make sure you take note of how I show that to you. Your titles, labels, and notes. The scale that you've used, detailed dimensioning, the cutting plane, that's not going to be necessary in this specific view. Your hatching won't be necessary, but your north point uh, and won't be necessary as well. All right, let's look at how this compares to the checklist. Now, on your checklist, it is 5.1.2 on page 17. So, let's see how you're going to get your marks here. Two elevations that show the front entrance and the side view of the building. That's the first two requirements. Did you draw these prescribed views showing the front entrance and the side view? If you did, two marks. External walls and cover drive through at the main entrance. So is the external walls visible in your elevation? Did you include the covered drive through and the main entrance? Two marks. All door and window detail, including the door and window frames. Two marks. The Dutch gable roof detail, including the rainwater items. Now, this, people, is going to be important because your specific roof needs to be shown in all of these views. You are grade 12 now, and that's going to be a requirement. I'll show you exactly how that looks. Then your wastewater disposable system. Again, the sewer important. And have you drawn these according to the same scale as your floor plan? Absolutely critical. That's your 10 marks that you're going to get in total. Now, let's look at a, just in general first add examples from previous work okay so this is one of my previous learners and just look at the scope of what is required on this page now remember of course the title block although they've chosen the title block on this page you can have it on any other page but 
your page needs to have at least a border and at the bottom your name, surname, page number, drawing title and date of completion. That's a minimum requirement. Then you're going to have your two elevations. And if you look at the learner, how they've spaced it, it's again well planned on this page, okay? And it's a high quality grade 12 elevation drawing. So please do not do this in haste, okay? It includes the door frames, the window frames, the window openings, the window sills here, okay? It includes all the rainwater downpipes. The gullies, okay, needs to be clearly indicated. Your complete roof, now of course your specific roof will look different. I'll show you an example of your roof in a moment. You've got your natural ground level. You've got your finished floor level and it's appropriately indicated, okay. Then you have your sewer, your actual inspection ice coming out where there's a, a, a basin, for instance, or where there's a toilet. That goes into your main sewer line with a fall indicated. You've got your different heights, at least heights. And um, there's probably too much here, but at least a couple of key widths here. And it needs to be uh, labeled. Okay. And it needs to be labeled. All right. Let's look at another elevation. And of course, the requirements for them was different than yours. But you can see here, they had a porch veranda area here. But again, you've got your fall indicated on your sewer. You've got your detailed dimensions, your rainwater items, all of that that we've mentioned in the previous drawing. Let's look at another example before we look at the actual roofing. Okay, here you can see two more examples. Again, please take note on the window frames, the door frames, all the roofing detail and the various labels as well as labeling the two views. Okay, to just help you out here with a Dutch gable roof and having understanding of how this looks, I've done three quick freehand sketches for you. The first one here is a 3D view, and let's say we've got our front view and our side view. Then this Dutch gable here will actually have a flat surface. All right, as the pitch goes to the ridge here, there's a flat surface on both sides. I've just tried to show you that. To help you understand that better, let's look at the front view. So on the front view, we've got the two pictures here that I've spoken about. Then I've got a vertical part leading up to the main ridge here. Okay, there's just the fascia. I haven't done all the details here and the walls. If I would look from the side view, I would actually look into this flat surface, which is this part here, and this angular part is this part here with again the end of that roof with its fascias. Why do I have double lines all around? Remember these corrugated iron sheets will have to be covered at the joints so that we keep out moisture. So you'll have to add a ridge and a barge board and therefore you have these double lines visible. All right you'll further add onto this your gutter. Now just if I would do that in freehand of course you guys are going to use uh, other means of drawing it, your gutter would run round about there. Okay, and the wh why is there extrusion here is because it wraps around the same here on the side here. All right, so that will continue, and your rainwater downpipe also come down there. Okay, that's just a quick insight into how this Dutch gable roof would look. All the best for your own design in nailing the two elevations. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn.